We are back with the finals of the Pro Dota 2 American Non-Pro Qualifiers for the Non-Pro League. That is a mouthful for the description of this tournament. With me today, joining me is uh, Aussie, once again, did a lovely job casting with me. If only he could take, if only I could take away that accent of his. He's, uh, he's, he's driving all the girls crazy, is what's happening. Pretty much I'm sorry, is. mate. It's really not intentional. I mean, it would be worse if I had my webcam up, though, because then that would oh. be like sealed. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. You want to have webcam wars. I'll show you webcam wars, <laughs> all right? Put on my uniform and everything, man, all right? I'll, I'll go all in with that shit. But you you can't say that you're not doing intentionally, even through a mate in there. Come on, that's classic Australian calling me. I mate. know, good day and mate and all these <laughs> little buggers that just slink in. I'm I'm sorry, I've been living in Sweden now for the last what is it, twelve years exactly? Uh, no, in one and a half week I'll have been in Sweden now for twelve years straight. So I mean, most of, in my opinion, most of my accents disappeared. I mean, I don't even sound anywhere close to what, for example, Toby or God sound like, and they're both Australians as well, but. As long as I don't sound British or American, I am happy. Not just because I don't want to sound like them, but because I want to sound like myself. That, that is true. You do. I was going to comment on that. I was going to comment. You don't sound like a classic Australian. I'm not even sure what your accent is, but I guess I, a combination of Swedish Australian. Maybe it's a Swedish accent. I don't know. You, you aren't going quirky, quirky like uh, 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 the, the Swedish chef from the Muppet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. I am a chef, though, so, I mean, that could be it. I, were, I used to work as a sushi chef until I retired. Uh, what was it, last year? No, year before last, actually. Okay, now you just need to stop it, all right? <laughs> I'm an Australian, I what live can in I say? Sweden, I love food. I'm a chef. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I grew up in a big city. I grew up in Melbourne. So, I mean, it, the, the accent in a big city is a lot different from the smaller towns. And you'll have that in any country. I mean, have a guy from a little small town in America compared to New York City, and the accents are completely different. Yeah, that's that's also part of it. All right, guys. Well, we already got some bans and picks going down. So, uh, banning out um, OT, which is um, Sith Happens Overthrown. So, uh, that they took out uh, Giga. I believe Giga actually left. But either way, they've made it all the way here. They banned out Windrunner, Lycanthrope, and Riki. Uh, Believer is banning out Tidehunter, Leshrank, and Furia. And the first pick being picked up, of course, is the Panda that Believers has done so well. Uh, I believe they've been using him all throughout the tournament. But well, as we saw last game, he just crushing them with them. Um, OT picking up uh, Syllabair and Sand King, and then Invoker Shadow Demon, and then Shadow Shaman being picked up for the final third pick of the pick phase uh, for OT. What do you think about this so far, Aussie? I love the Rasa pick. I love the Sand King pick. They definitely go very well together. Obviously, the Syllabair is going to be some kind of uh, carry. His uh, Entangle is one of those underrated, uh, what do you call, um, disables. When you get it off, it's huge, and it always seems to go at just the right or the wrong moment, depending which team you're looking at. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the Panda is a great pick, and shout out to the guy who played him last game. He did a fantastic job. So I'm surprised. Either OT didn't look at the match, or they didn't know anything about it, but if I was them, I would have first banned Panda, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of pro games that I've been casting, I, I see Panda a lot of time. Uh, being banned out in the first set of bands, he's just so incredibly powerful. Um, and the question is, uh, like, I agree with you. I think Sand King, Shadow Shaman, uh, those kind of team fight heroes, you have a little bit of push. Um, adding in with the Silver, I think that's going to free up a lot of room for Silver to be able to farm, and then he's going to come in and just do some serious work. But the question is, did they give up too much to have those picks? I mean, they gave up uh, Panda first pick, but then they also gave away Invoker and Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon, as we saw, did very well. Um, linking with the Panda and all the heroes on the team, really. And he, he just scales so well into the game. And, of course, Invoker is just the classic dominating mid, uh, just doing some serious work. And all those disables that he provides really helps out a Panda in these team fights. They have an like, amazing amount of team fights so far. Um, do you think that's too much, or, or who, do you think it was worth it, giving up those two heroes in exchange for uh, Sand King and Shadow Shaman? No, I don't think it was worth it at all. I mean, Disruption, a Cold Snap coming out, Panda Clap. Any of those combinations, you have the Ice Wall as well, you have um, Alacrity going out on a Panda, giving him those extra attack speed for the crits. Uh, I, no, not even a chance. I, I would be kicking myself if I was a wizard at the moment. I don't... Yeah. It hurts to see these lineups, and I think definitely that uh, the Dyer got the advantage on the first three picks. 
But looking at it now, though, with the Lich and the Warlock, it's a lot easier to see the team fight potential. They've gone for all AoE heroes except for the Silla Bear, which is going to be the carry. And they might act. It looks it looks a lot better than what it was when I was looking just at the three first picks. So uh, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> like now we see what they're doing, but. Uh, clearly, both teams were very uh, sure about what they were going to pick up because we didn't even get to talk about the second set of bands. Normally, you have a lot of time to just bullshit during this pick and band phase, and all of a sudden they're like, "Nope, we have all our bands, and we know what we want, and both teams are ready to go." So yeah, down to business. Um, Fifteen seconds I, per pick on average. Bam. I like it. All right, well, let's go. Uh, I haven't done this yet, but uh, let's go ahead and top to bottom, left to right. We'll go ahead and cover who's playing what. We got Empire Wizard playing the Sand King, Dota the Explorer on Lich, Lair Bear on Lone Druid, and uh, Chinese Funky Symbols on Warlock, and Tropical Smoothie on uh, Shadow Shaman. If you want to cover the Belieber team. Uh, no, sorry, you do it. I, I just got called. Okay, out. okay, I got it. Sorry, sorry. Uh, exiled on Brewmaster, no worries. Uh, do you believe in magic? I love that name so much on, on Venomancer. Uh, gods, uh, believe of gods, not, you know, typical gods with a Z. Uh, on Shadow Demon, uh, Ryu Uburos, Burus, something like that, on Invoker, and, uh, Dump Skeezy, who's also known as Defect, on, uh, Marana. And I'll uh, go ahead and give Defect a shout out because he's been topping in our chat and all that sort of thing. He asked if if we believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> what is with that? These these puns coming out again. Once again, we're going to see the Believers running in with that solo panda in the safe lane um, versus what is presumably going to be the suicide lane. Uh, but this time, I think he's going to have a lot of harder time um, going up against it. We have a full man smoke going up. Uh, by the the uh, Sith happens, and they're going to try right away give uh, a huge advantage to this lone druid. They're going to just jump on him, look at it. Invoker's just absolutely bone. He has a double damage uh, lone druid on him, and he was just like, "What's happening? Okay, I'll fight you in my tower." And then all of a sudden, three heroes coming in from behind. So they pick up a first blood, but uh, Believers are already setting up. They're going to right away try and block OT from being able to come right back into this lane. Um, yeah, they're just going to try and keep him out. And this, uh, uh, I think, mm -hmm. sorry, no, go ahead. And uh, this retreat that they're doing now for the mid lane is going to cost them a lot of XP in the uh, in the lane phase. And I, because they're downhill on both sides of the ramp, they're not going to be able to walk in properly and have that advantage. I mean, they know they're up there, but they're too scared to walk up, and they're losing out a lot of XP and gold now, even though they did get the first blood. So I mean, sure, fine, it worked out in that sense, but now in retro uh, retrospect, I don't know if it was worth it to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Invoker gives right back in a lane. He doesn't lose any gold. Um, he just comes right back in a lane, so he's not going to lose a whole lot against Lone Druid. So all you're really talking about is giving Lone Druid um, some early farm, which he has a headdress right off the start, by the way. Um, interesting items. But giving him a little bit of that advantage right off the bat, it's not huge. But then, like you said, you lost a lot. Arrow, there it goes. It does barely land. He almost missed out, but they are going to pick up that kill with that cheesy little combo of Shadow Demon Disruption combined with Marana. If you throw a slow in there from Venomancer as well, it's even easier to hit that arrow. You don't have to hit it the moment he respawns. Um, and so, looks like we're going to see Lich at top going to be trying to deny as much experience away from Brewmaster. But that does also mean, unlike last time where Rinrunner was able to do a lot, he's just going to be able to uh, uh, free farm a lot. And uh, if he ever gets Lich out with, uh, with boots and with that clap, he's going to be doing some serious work to him. Um, even just one clap and a lot of auto attacks, uh, Lich is going to have to be really careful there. Oh, I mean, I would give Lich a lot more advantage, though, compared to the Windrun against the Panda, because Lich has that uh, spell damage from the Blast, also slowing the Panda down. So it's a double way of both harassing and retreating, as well as mm -hmm. being able to deny the creep. So the creep's always going to be close to the tower, and because Panda's a melee hero, he's not going to be able to sit underneath the tower and um, when the creep's that close and um, still farm. Just like now, he did the clap, but in return, he gets a Nova in his face, and the Lich can just casually walk away without being uh, right click down. So, I mean, I don't think that's going to be a problem for Lich to uh, to face the panda in the lane. Yeah, actually, I, I really agree. Um, I guess I wasn't thinking about the lane too much, but, uh, you know, it's not like Brewmaster is really a combination of keeping the lane back and then uh, also getting a counter slow when you get slowed. It's not like Brewmaster is going to be able to hit that many auto attacks up bottom. until he gets upgraded. Oh, bottom. 
Action going down. Nice arrow. Sunstrike going to follow it up. They share the damage with the Warlock. He's trying to heal the Stand King as much as possible. He has a stun, but he doesn't try and throw it to dodge some damage. And now they're just chasing away this Warlock who's going to go down as well. Leap goes off even to pick up that kill. So they pick up two kills now at bottom. Metamancer scoring to both of those. And they are just absolutely crushing this bottom lane so far. Um, and, and on top of that, Invoker doing a decent job in middle with his, of course, his Blades of Attack and then the uh, Exhort uh, build. He's going to build the last hit relatively well against Lone Druid. So really the only option is they're crushing their, their try lane in exchange for pretty much pulling it out neutral in, in top lane, as I would say. Uh, looking at the gold graph and the XP graph, I mean, sure, they got the advantage by doing the first blood, but then after that, it's been slowly but steadily dipping towards the Dyer's favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially, I mean, I really like the way Believer was right on top of that. I mean, like you said, I was going to say exactly what you said, where they got the first blood, but they put themselves in a really bad position. And Believer's just really capitalized on that. Shattered Demon going a little bit too far forward with his smoke. He's going to go in the disruption now. Venomance are a little bit far behind, but he is going to be able to hit the slow. And combined with Sunstrike splitting between creeps, but they are going to be able to do enough damage there. Easily picking up that kill with Cold Snap as well. So once again, giving Invoker just... Uh, a little bit of health there, and he's going to be able to pick up face boots, which is going to help so much in this lane. Uh, just being able to auto attack uh, so much more and really be able to out CS uh, Silibear in that regards. And now we're going to see Shadow Demon now going top, helping out this panda. If he can get it, he's going to have a level 5 here. And the slow is going to be down as well. So once he hits this disruption, panda's going to be able to catch up. He's going to be able to slow and easily pick up this kill. There it is. Couple more hits, and they're going to be able to take him down. The combination is just too powerful. And nice little movement by Gods. Uh, I'm sure Believer was calling out that he did need some help at the top. Um, what was it? Exile, I believe his name? His name just... Oh, Beaver now is his name. <laughs> ah, Jesus. I'm pretty sure it was Exile. Oh, well, anyway. Seem you can just keep on changing your names game to game. Oh, this I know, makes right? our life so much easier, doesn't it? Uh, I, I had one game. It was... We were casting. It was just... It was it was the Sex Finals. Um, Sunday Evening Cup Series. And it was uh, so frustrating because you had every single person, there was like one person who had his actual name and every other person was not only choosing just some random ass name, but some of them were choosing other pro players name, not their own, but other people's. And it was so frustrating. <laughs> I was just like, I hate this game. I hate this game. And it just turned into a really big troll fest where both teams weren't really trying very hard. I mean, it was the sex uh, finals. It's not like they were playing for anything big. Actually, up at top, we're going to see the Lich once again going to be going down here. Nice little attempt at a dodge, but does eat away tree and goes down to the Panda Crit. And now we see action at bottom. Sand King going in on this Marana. Can they li Oh, there it is. One more hit on the Sand King. Where is the Venomancer going? He does not hit the Sand King for the final hit. The Ward picks up the kill combined with Poison. And they grab that. Now Warlock at level 1 is going to go down easily even if the arrow doesn't hit. They pick up that kill. So they pick up two kills and they don't kill the Marana at all. This try lane is just crushing left and right. Uh, it doesn't even matter that the Shadow Shaman, you know, locks down heroes. Just in this try lane, he's not really being successful. And I don't think this is paying off. I mean, having Lone Druid um, solo mid versus in Invoker, Shadow Shaman's just not really benefiting a whole lot in this, this try lane whatsoever. And on top of that, he has no levels now. So he's not going to transfer into the mid game very well um, because of that. Do you think that was a mistake with their, the try lane that they're running? Should they have run Lone Druid and sort of... Uh, um, a, a jungle with having a dual lane at bottom? What do you think? Yeah, no, either that or well, I'm just thinking about it now. Just so I'm just looking at Lone Druid's skill build and if he's going to solo a mid lane, he doesn't need the bear. Or if he does want to use the bear, then he has to use it a lot more effectively by constantly pushing the Invoker back behind the creeps. I mean, Invoker has so much HP regen thanks to his skills that he, I mean, he can take a lot of damage, but if you push him back by constantly microing the bear properly when right-clicking him, He's not going to be able to get as much attention on the creeps. He's going to be annoyed by it, and this annoying factor, as well as the damage, is going to help him. But, I mean, he picked up now Midas on his bear. That's what he's going for. He's going for, like, a late-game like, strategy, just getting a lot of farm up, becoming an ultra-strong unit. But it's just not working for him the way that he's done it now. I just I really don't like it. There's so many better skill builds that he could have gone since if he's going to solo mid. Either that or put him into the jungle or babysit him in a tri lane. That's, yeah, in my opinion. 
Yeah, like when I first saw this lineup, I was really expecting Lone Druid not to go for that sort of Radiance build, but go for the tanky build and try and have this Shadow Shaman farming middle, get some early levels up, get the wards out. I thought they were going to be trying to push um, and force some team fights before the Panda picked up some, some farm, but that's exactly, they're not doing anything like that. Bottom lane, jungle. Oh yeah, just getting destroyed. Warlock taking a lot of damage. Uh, a couple more hits. Where else to see? Probably see the Sunstrike. Did it already go off? No, um, missing. they're not gonna pick up that kill. So Sunstrike actually was already down. So missing out on that one. But um, Warlock level one, which is very interesting. Oh yeah, I know he's he that's, just hasn't been. That can't feel good. No, and I really don't. Invoker is actually it's... gonna get a little bit of counter here. Can they get a root? Can they buy a root? Please, there it goes. The second hit from the bear gets the roots, and now they have the, the chain frost bounces over the Venomancer, and they might be able to pick him up as well. We're gonna see some nice ward blocking. Great job in that regard, blocking the bear long enough and dodging out of his way. Really great job. The arrow as well hitting Lich. Uh, heal going off, trying to save him, but a level one heal is just not very much at this point. But all five grouped up, they can't really chase too well. Believers just uh, trying to do what harassment they can. But meanwhile, I mean, look at Beaver. He's just taking out the he's he's skipping past the tower and just taking on the creeps with a clap and he's gonna be able to push down this tier one tower relatively well if no one uh, comes and stops him yeah i mean he's got that evasion 20 percent and he's got the stout shield as well well together with a clap it's easy for him to just take out an entire creep wave and if he does it behind a tower when he knows all five heroes are bottom lane or doing something else by the river then he has no problem with it and he's going to get more gold from it. it's guaranteed five creeps out of the five creep wave and the towers is going to get pushed down completely. But uh, no, I'm, the problem that I'm looking at now is that the Venomance is level 6. Fine. That's a bit of team fight. But the only one on Radiant side that even has any levels is the Bear. And all he has is the Midas. I mean, Warlock is level 2, finally, at least. Rastop oh, is God. The Sorry. Getting caught out by the Shadow Shaman, but it was a nice little idea. Shadow, Shadow Demon actually went down the cliff. Um, and was able to throw a disruption over the cliff, and it was a nice little start, but unfortunately the rest of uh, Sith Happens was there, especially that Shadow Shaman. So they do pick up um, that Panda, who immediately bought back and went down to bottom, I guess, to keep farming. Yeah, for sure. And really, at this, this early on, the way he's been farming anyway, uh, him him buying back instantly, the, those you know few extra 20 seconds is, you know, might be enough. He might be able to, to, to farm back what he bought out with. Yeah, but it's also just getting the levels back into the lane and going in to be able to kill more heroes. But what I was saying before is... Oh, if this bear goes down, still a bear is easily dead. They don't even have to kill a bear, but it goes down anyway. This, uh, now Sand King's getting targeted with the stun from the Panda Earth one. Now they're going to drop him down. There he goes. Nice purge once again. Drone up in the Cyclone and then purging him once he's ready to. But unfortunately, the Fire Panda is down. There he goes. He gets the clap right as he comes out. Great job by Beaver locating that now he's gonna have to just try and get out the tier two tower is up we're gonna see the invoker hopefully be able to hit um nice little push oh no lich not communicating with his team the rest of his team goes back and he kept going forward and he gets completely pays for it yeah that's a problem i mean part of part of radiant's problem now is that half the heroes haven't even reached level six yet the uh, sand king is level five the warlock is level two and the shadow shaman is level five and We've out. I mean, they went for a team fight lineup, and they haven't got the team fights, and they haven't got the ultis. And the dire team are just cashing in on that, pushing as much as they can, and just dominating fights while they can. And if it continues like this, they're never going to lose that advantage either. It's going to be a walkover. Yeah, absolutely. All the all the, the dire team has to do is keep putting pressure. I mean, with this sort of double Midas build on on Bear, if you're losing the early game so hard is you're just going to get crushed with the double midas build because you're not going to have the time to be able to farm back all that gold they use because i believe uh it takes what uh 17 minutes i think to, to get all the gold back uh, it's like 15 somewhere to 15 to 20 minutes to get all the gold back that you use on a midas um to get it back from midas transmute and um, that's that's a long time coming, and he hasn't doesn't have a second. Brewmaster taking a bunch of damage there. He gets a little bit low here. Um, he doesn't have his ultimate, so unless he teleports away right now, he's gonna try and hide in the jungle. Um, oh, he needs to teleport. Sand King stun goes off. Can he hide in the jungle? Arrow. Nice little clap. He's gonna try and get away. He's actually gonna get away here. The stun is not up from the Sand King, and they're gonna pick off three heroes. And Panda gets away scot free. 
Oh my goodness, with like 90 health, I think was the lowest he went down to, he was able to get back up and stay away. Nice little clap, great dodges, and they're going to be able to take the tier 2 here. Very nice little juking in the forest there. I mean, that's one of the things that shows casual players from uh, full-time players. I don't know if I want to call them pro players, but at least full-time players. They know these juking spots. They know how the jungle looks, even in the fog of war, and they use it to their advantage. And the way that Panda did it now, that was a perfect example. Mm-hmm. And now their tier two towers are going down, and it's still gonna be it's gonna be like thirty it's gonna be like the thirty thirty two minute mark when Silabar is finally making back his gold from the the Midas which he just picked up, and that's just way too late. I mean, by twenty five minutes they're gonna have to try and be defending their racks easily, if not before that. I mean, the dire team just has to execute some really um, well placed uh, aggression. And they're easily going to be able to pick up kills here if they can land an arrow. Where's the bear to block the arrow? He done misses out, but the purge combined with the damage is going to be way too much. He has no health whatsoever. All he doesn't have boosts. He all he has is the hand of Midas on of uh, the hero, and uh, on top of that, the um, the Head regen Head item. Whatever I forgot what it was. Yeah, Headshots. Head yeah, no, this doesn't make sense to me. I mean, looking at the bear's build now, both in skills and in items. He's going for blind build that he would casually use in a pub game without thinking about the situation, analyzing what he should be having instead. That's that's what I'm feeling. Is he's, he's playing on autopilot, and it's really not working out for him. I mean, a double Midas build would be epically good against a Chen, but not against a team like this that have no summons that he needs to transmute. We're gonna see the panda popping off his ultimate. Lich gets off his chain frost before he dies. He actually is gonna get out here. The pandas do not target him whatsoever. They're gonna jump on the warlock at least, pick up that that kill. Defect just trying to get out. Nice little stun by the Sand King's double stun takes away the Marana. And now Venomancer taking a lot of damage from the tower. Panda coming in from behind. Trying to hit a clap. Nice Shadow Shaman blocking with the rewards. Great job. And they're gonna be able to pick up this panda brewmaster. I mean, look at him, he's still tanking so well. But he just can't go anywhere. He's gonna go down. And no one else dies. Sand King barely getting out with under 50 health. But uh, the important thing is they do pick off the panda. Buyback coming in. So he's ready to execute some more aggression. I mean, the rest of the team is live. And uh, they do have some relatively uh, good regen on them. I mean, they all have full mana. Venomance is the only one who's really low at this point. They can even uh, forsake the tier 3 at middle, stop that push, instead go for bottom and take the tier 2. I think that's going to be much safer bet, especially with how low Venomancer is right now. Um, and with Panda ulti down. Yeah, for sure. I'm just looking at the levels now again, and... The only one, at least the rest of the team have caught up to all level 6 except for the Warlock. And I think once Warlock hits that level 6 and they're able to use his rock, it's going to be a little bit different than team fights, Especially put together with Fatal Bonds, it's going to do a lot more damage. But as, as, as it is right now, 5 to 19, the huge level difference, the huge goal difference is... It's hard. It's really hard for the Radiant team to catch up. And they went, they've, they were completely dominated in the early phase where they should have excelled, especially with their build. I mean, the Rasta solo mid could have taken a first tower, given them that extra gold, but instead they just got completely outmaneuvered with the roaming Shadow the, uh, the Shadow Demon and the uh, Venomancer. And then the fact that Panda has got to free farm all that time was, that was a mistake that's probably going to cost them the game completely. I don't see them coming back from this now. Absolutely. It looks like they're going to give up the uh, Aegis to the Marana, actually. Um, I mean, really, Panda at this point, with level 11, is an ult his ultimate up. They really only need to win the next team fight. In the next team fight, he is going to have his ultimate up, so he's not going to be worried about diving and dying. And they don't really have enough lockdown, enough damage to really kill him before he ults. So, giving up the, uh, the Aegis to the Marana, they're going to start pushing in this tier 2 tower at bottom. Um, just sort of doing a split push while Marana farms top away and pushes that in. Marana, let's go over the items real quick. I don't think we've gone over them at all. Oh my goodness, that gold graph. 14,000, over 14,000 in the lead for the uh, the Dire. It's just crazy. Go over items real quick. We got, uh, of course, the double Midas on the bear. One on the hero, one on the bear. You guys didn't know that the, they work separately. So we are able to do that. Not the best idea, but... Uh, Brewmaster does have a point booster on top of his arcane boost, so he's going to be building into that uh, Agonems sometime soon. We got uh, uh, Vanguard and Mana Boots on the Venomancer. Shatter Demon has actually gone for a Medallion of Courage. 
and set up for any sort of mech, anything like that. Goes for that. Uh, Invoker with the drums, of course, and then he's going to be working towards his Aghanims, and then Marana, of course, with the Aegis, Phase Boots, and Yasha on him. And um, right now, I mean, Warlock, still not level 6. That is just cruel. It's painful, and I mean, he only has 680 HP, and if you compare that to the Panda, who has 1400, that's on top of the evasion that he has, and top of the ultimate to escape, that is why he's completely dominating. He has so much HP and so much uh, survivability. Absolutely. Panda, using his Panda uh, to, to go forward, leaving the two squishies for the rest of his team to farm now with the Cyclone on the Sand King. He's going to try and jump on that, but uh, unfortunately his Panda ult is down. He's going to have to back away. They're just going to back up, take this tier two now with all five heroes. And uh, I mean, one thing, one silver lining is it's 19 minutes in and these heroes are so low level. When they die, they come right back. So it's going to be another 5-on-5 five five for this tower, and this time they don't panda with low health and auto ultimate? I'm not sure if they uh, so sure about this. I mean, I, I think really, I mean, they have such a huge lead, and I don't think they can really throw it that easily. But uh, still, I think, uh, you know, maybe just back up, get a little bit more farm, get that panda healed up. Radiant and, uh, you know, just to be safe. Complete, sorry, the Radiant need two complete team wipes to uh, catch up in levels and uh, at least make a bit of goal difference. Yeah. I don't see that happening. Warlock catching an arrow to the face. He's easily going to go down here. Just a couple nukes. Sunstrike actually missing out, but they do pick up that kill anyway. Sand King is now taking so much damage. And Brewmaster runs right through the middle with no health and uh, is able to pick up kills anyway. Four heroes down. Lich is the only hero left, and he does not have his ultimate. And uh, that means this tier three is going to go down relatively easily. I mean, they don't have a whole lot left. I mean, look at that nuke. Panda at 150 health. He is not scared. At all. He almost has Zaganims. But, um... I mean, the fact that you can do that 20 minutes in, charge into the uh, the base with 300 health, uh, really goes to show just how well you're dominating this game so far. I can't believe the uh, Warlock didn't put uh, his um, heal, which is also a, um, yeah, well, a damage over time spell on the bottom. The bottom at under 60 HP would have killed him. Mm-hmm. Arrow coming out, does lock down on the Shadow Shaman. Sand King's gonna use his stun to get out, but Shadow Shaman catching the arrow is definitely boned here. He's not gonna be able to get out. Once again, Beaver is just running around with no health, but it doesn't matter because the rest of Sith happens just getting crushed. Couple more hits, there goes the Sand King in his fountain, dying, and the Rax is down. And uh, I mean, 29 to five, 21 minutes in with the Rax down. Uh, they don't even have their Aghanims yet, and that's when they should really start kicking it up. I mean, that once Beast, uh, Brewmaster gets Aghanims in level 16, and Invoker has his Aghanims and a bunch of levels on him, that's when their team really starts getting into gear, and they haven't even gotten at that point, and they're still crushing him. Yeah, they've been completely outplayed. I think the lane phase war was destroyed them for uh, the Radiant side. They, I think they laned badly, and they chose their lanes badly, and then the Beard has not excelled the way they hoped he would have. And yeah, uh, that's cost them a lot. All right. Well, I mean, this is the finals. This is a chance for either team to get into. Actually, Panda's going to go down finally. He does get locked down once his uh, ultimate died. And uh, actually, Murana might get caught out here as well. He's going to lose the Aegis, it looks like. There goes the final nuke. Uh, Venomancer is going to try. Hopefully, he's going to be able to throw something here to help out the Marana clean up. Here's the Marana coming back in. He's going to be able to pop the Shadow Shaman. Ultimate jumping around. Nice little leap dodging in the Chain Frost. Now he's going to jump onto this poor Warlock. Oh, Sand King missing the stun. What was that? Now he's going to pop the Epicenter. And he's nowhere near for it. He actually does get a little bit of slow. Oh, he barely kills the Marana. Marana turning around to hit the arrow, which killed the Sand King, but also got him too close to Epicenter. 8 to 34. Nice little fight for them. I mean, sure, they, they've already lost to Rax, and Dire Team being overconfident stayed in the base. It did cost them a couple of deaths, but they got a couple of kills at the same time. That's not the big issue. The big issue is that the Dire, this uh, Radiant Team managed to get a little bit of levels. The Warlock jumped about one and a half levels up, so he's level 6 finally, meaning in next fight we might be able to see a um, Golem coming down. Unless the GG call comes out now, which it should. Yeah, I mean, really, there's no way they can stop this push. 
whatsoever. Aghanim's now on Brewmaster. I believe uh, Invoker has his as well. Yep. Nice little double stun from the Sand King, but they don't have any ultimates to help out. No Chain Frost, no Wards, no Epicenter. Nice little ulti from uh, Warlock, but that's not going to be enough to stop anything. Uh, Panda actually taking a lot of damage here, and he still only has uh, 15 seconds till his ultimate it goes down, and he's going to go down before his ultimate is back up. So aggressive. Warlock is going to go down at least in that trade. So they trade one for one. Panda for Warlock. Not worth it. But uh, I still showing a little bit of a gleam of, of hope for uh, Sith Happens. Just the smallest, smallest of gleams. I don't understand that Warlock has gone uh, level 3 upheaval and has no HP and they don't have enough stuns and things to, to allow, allow him to use it. I would have definitely maxed out Fatal Bonds instead. It just does not make... A lot of what this team is doing does not make sense to me. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean the combination of Chain Frost and Epicenter with uh, max level Fatal Bonds... You could do some serious work in team fights. Exactly, and I mean to use upheaval you need your team to have a lot of stuns, a lot of disables, or you to have a lot of HP and, or possibly even a BKB. But not the way it's been going now. Well, Moran is cleaning up heroes with the Manta style on top of Maelstrom. Um, I guess this would be a best of three, huh? I wasn't really thinking about it. I think it is. But uh, Sith think happens, apparently, I don't think they can play the three. I think, I don't know, I might have missed it, but I think they were talking about it in the lobby, and I think they wanted to change the best of three to a best of one, because they only have one game to be able to play. But I could be wrong, I don't know. All right, well, um, Believers going to be taking the first Pro Dota 2 non-pro qualifier to get into the non-pro league. Non-pro league has a $10,000 prize pool, which is amazing, by the way, for amateur teams. That is just uh, insane that Pro Dota 2 would put that much in for amateur teams. I love it. So uh, they're going to be the first team to join those ranks. We're going to have, uh, I believe, eight other teams join them. So we might see Sith Happens once again in these other qualifiers. And uh, give a shout out to uh, Holy for the Wind for doing the streaming. Thank you very much to him. Uh, of course, Azu for uh, doing the VOD camera work. And a uh, special shout out to you, Ozzy, for being uh, co-casting with me and being uh, a sexy motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you. No, I love coming in as a guest. Whenever I have the chance, opportunity, just give me a call and... If I can, I love to do it. I have, I always love casting, so uh, thank you. It's been yeah, uh, absolutely. I like our synergy. I do. Even this is the first time we've casted. I don't think I've ever actually been on a call with you either before this, so it's gone great. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think we've ever talked to before, but I think it went really well, and I had a really fun time uh, casting with you. So, all right, guys. Well, before this goes uh, a little bit too sappy, we will go ahead and uh, knock this out. Go ahead. Um, Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I know it was uh, a little bit of long time casting. We had some uh, breaks and that sort of thing. But thank you very much for sticking with us all the way through. Um, we're going to be casting tomorrow. We have the uh, Play for Dota 2 Cup. Um, we're going to be casting that uh, starting at 10 a.m. PST. I think I am. I actually don't have the time in front of me, but it is on our Facebook. It's on our Twitter. It's on those different things. Um, I'm sure we're going to be putting it in the chat as well, the RC chat. But we're going to be casting that tomorrow, and then right after, maybe even cutting into it, um, depending on how long the cup goes, we're also going to be hopefully casting the um, uh, uh, the the pro, the American Pro League. We have two games going on: uh, Hallyu versus X Gosu, and then as well as um, a game right after that of Skill Difference, uh, my team versus um, uh, Potem Bottom, which is uh, Snake King's team. So. Uh, those should be some really good games. Um, if we don't, if the cup goes a little bit too long, we're going to try and get a second stream up. Um, we're actually not going to be, the, the cup is not going to be on our uh, Twitch TV channel. It's actually going to be on the uh, 4PL own TV. They have their own one. They wanted us to cast on that. So that's where we're going to be at. Uh, but we're going to try and open a second stream. If the cup isn't over by then, we'll open up a second stream on our own channel and cast the uh, American Pro uh, League as well, those two games. So... Um, thank you very much. Uh, guys, go ahead and like us on Facebook. Do that sort of thing. I'm not going to give it too much. Just please do it. We'll love you forever if you do. And uh, that's it. We'll see you guys tomorrow.